Welcome to our series on research data management. Today is some kind of an introductory session, so it's called Research Data Live Longer and mainly focus the aspect that research data might have a future longer than the project duration and so they need some kind of a special treatment. Um, we will look at that and in particular we will look at the entire research data life cycle. Think of a researcher called Louise Lieder. She's um, working at the Institute of Squirrel Research and she has the idea of creating a project, a new project on the population dynamics of squirrels. She's working on a project proposal in this regard where she wants to compare her theoretical model with some concrete data collections in other countries. So she's hard working on this uh, proposal text and she has already found some partners, uh, one in Germany, one in Great Britain, to provide the data. So everything's fine. The deadlines are tight as usual. So they have built up the proposal, but she knew that we put some more efforts into the data management point. But at the point in time now, we can't know whether the project will be granted or not. We can do that later on. She's lucky. The project is granted and so they can find some persons working on this project. One of these persons is um, Frank Forscher. He's from Germany. He's um, very well connected to the rangers in Germany and um, has great experience in the data gathering. So he has uh, quite some clear idea how he will do the entire data gathering and how he will organize the collection of his results. For the data gathering in Great Britain, in the UK, we have found Rachel Research to work um, with Louise Leader. She's quite new in the area, so she has a different approach. So she organizes it in a monthly way, traveling through all the regions in that time. That's how she's doing it. So that's the part of the data gathering. After one year, Louise Lida has done some great improvements on her theoretical model and she's of course interested in the data. When she looks at these data she sees that well they are created in quite some different way. So the organization by Frank is on a year based and then we have sheets for different um, federal states while we have separate files for each month in Rachel's case. So it took them quite some time um, to put all the things together. They had some video conferences, they had some workshops in order to fiddle out the details and of course to set it into relation to the theoretical models. Nonetheless, everything works out fine, so they have some great publications. Frank and Rachel could finish their PhD thesis within this project, so everybody is really happy with the project. And um, yeah, they are very often asked for some additional information on the projects and that of course no problem. Everybody of them has looked into the preservation of the data. Louise Lieder is using the Institute file server and um, has a project folder there where she put all the data that she has created, her theoretical models, but also the data that she got from Frank Forscher and Rachel Research. So Frank Forscher has collected all the data on a USB stick and he has even selected all the relevant mails from the rangers and put them in addition on this stick. Well, so that we have additional information available. Now, remember that Rachel traveled around quite a lot. So while she provides the electronic data and stores them on a CD, she also has used a lab book, handwritten lab book in this case, and she simply put the CD into this lab book where she has some additional information, for example, on observation points and things like that. Even several months after the project has officially been finished, um, people are still interested in the research. Unfortunately, Rachel has left research and is no longer available. And Louise is now head of the institute and typically doesn't have so much time to cope with such nasty data details. But Frank Forscher is still available. And even though he's not so much interested in squirrels anymore, he's happy to answer the, the questions by several other people here. So, of course, it always takes some time for him to again dig into the data and uh, select the ones that the people are used to. He's happy with that and likes the contexts that come out of these aspects. Now, five years later, 
Remy Reuse has been granted a new EU project. He has to look uh, or wants to look at the evolution of squirrels in entire Europe. One of the conditions that are connected to this grant is that he must build on the work of Luise Lida. Well, and now Luise Lida gets a little bit nervous. Of course, she has taken care of the data and has fulfilled the good scientific practice by ensuring that the data is available for at least 10 years. The question is whether she will still be able to answer all of Remy's questions. So she again looks at the project folder, which is fortunately still available, even though the file server has been moved several times. Um, but the data is still available and she can look into the data. Unfortunately, she finds out that it's quite hard to again get an understanding of the different data. So she tries to um, talk to the others, but unfortunately, for example, Frank Forscher is no longer available. Now, when she meets with Remy Reuse, it turns out that he has a slightly different focus. Um, so he is not so much interested in the theoretical model, but into the concrete data collections, because they must be fit into the new data collections he will carry out. Um, unfortunately, he will now not only be interested in the color of the different squirrels, but also, for example, in the typical sizes. Now, the question is whether such information is already available in Louise's data. When trying to fiddle that out, Louise contacts the different institutes. She arrives at Frank Forscher's Institute. It turned out that unfortunately the USB stick has gone lost because the Institute has moved to a different location. So no more data from that place, unfortunately. On the other hand, somebody at the Institute of Rachel remembered that she has this lab book. And indeed, they handed over the lab book and Remy is happy to find some more details uh, about the observation points and even um, where some additional information, for example, on the size of the squirrels is stored there. So part of the information is reusable for um, Remy, but others are not. So how realistic is that scenario? Well, keep in mind that it's really nice work by Rachel, Frank and Louise. Everything's fine. They, they work properly. They have stored their data as good as they could. Unfortunately, the USB stick got lost, but okay, that can happen some point in time. It shouldn't happen. But, um, well, now what has, could have been done better here? Um, as we've seen in the beginning, there was some time pressure and uh, looking at the data management is something that uh, Louise felt not to be such an important point. Maybe that's a point where we need to start with because that's the point that you really must follow. You must prepare and take some time to look into the data management of a project um, because your data will live longer than your project. A good practice recommendation in this regard is during the planning phase, start to create a data management plan. A data management plan, as we will exemplify in different videos later on, is a document that should help you organize your data management throughout the entire project lifetime, the entire data life cycle. Um, so in the beginning, it is a little bit vague, having not all the details, while in the end it might, if you update it regularly, be the entire encompassing documentation of your data management um, for all the data that you produce within this project. When it comes to the production, of your data, the gathering, the collection of your data, however you call it, or the simulations that you run. You should agree on conventions on doing these things. Really, you should apply where possible some community standards and look, well, that's the way how typically it's done. Even though I need only part of that information, I follow the same path and take out the part of information that I need for my project, but still the other information, for example, is available if others later on want to reuse my data. It makes you, it's also easier for you to aggregate and analyze your data if you are working, for example, with several partners, as we have seen here within this example, with Frank and Rachel. Um, typically, a collaborative platform also helps you to support the sharing between the different partners and the integration. So having standardized metadata schema or having agreed vocabularies is something that really makes this step much easier. It is also a good idea to look at the preservation strategy. Who is responsible which data needs to be stored? Who will take part of that? 
If you have a project with different partners, it might possibly make sense that each of them is responsible for that. But who's head of that project? Maybe he wants a copy as well and wants to put it into the preservation infrastructure of his or her own institution. So the recommendation here is quite clear to use the professional service as it is typically provided by a university IT center, for example. In regard to access, typical aspects that you must think of is what is relevant data that others could be interested in? What is the necessary context information that you must provide with the data in order to have others understand the data and being able to reuse them at all? You should think whether and how your data should be findable and how and who could gain access to it. Maybe you must think about the concrete reuse conditions. And one solution could of course be to publish the data and then have some other project, for example the project of Remy Reuse, that um, can reuse and cite the data that you've produced in order to avoid duplicate work, improve the work when you redo um, observations in Germany and Great Britain, for example. So this is kind of an introductory part now, introducing the example on squirrel research and you will find several more videos on more specific topics um, at um, our site. If you have any more questions or need any assistance, please contact us via the service desk. Thank you.